The first human ancestor that ever existed was around 7 to 5 million years ago. According to the scientists, they started to make and use stone tools around 2.5 million years ago. And that tiny step has led to the development of amazing technologies that we enjoy today. Our brain is the most important and vital organ of our body. The second most important organ of our body is the heart, which can be transplanted. But still, to this date, there is no technology which can do a successful brain transplant. For now, once removed from the skull, it's gone forever. Brains in almost all the living organisms is present really close to its sensing parts like eyes, ears, tongue, etc. Which basically means our head or skull. In the case of human brains, the left hemisphere controls the right part of the body and the right hemisphere controls the left part of the body. Sounds strange? Here is an example. Try not to read the words on the screen, instead just say the color out loud. Got confused? Don't worry, your brain is in perfect condition. The reason if you got confused is one of the hemisphere is reading the words and the other is observing the color and both of these hemispheres are connected with different types of nerves because of which you as in your consciousness gets confused which hemispheres information should you trust onto and finally you end up believing your dominant hemisphere which is responsible for reading and writing because of which you pronounce the words instead of saying the colors out loud. All of us have a favorite color. Colors play a very vital role in our life, especially when it comes to remembering beautiful landscapes, portraits of the beautiful moments captured of our loved ones. And hence, vibrant colors storybooks are the ones firstly introduced to the children in kindergarten. Scientists have came across a research which says that our brain processes images about 60,000 times faster than compared to a written information. Some experts suggest that images are duly encoded whereas words are only encoded once in our brain. Thinking positive should always be a very important aspect of our life. When we think positive, certain types of chemicals are released in our brain which increases energy and enthusiasm. To believe and perform different activities which was never performed before by an individual. Also the image of not gradually does not form in our minds. If you ever tell a kid not to use such kind of words again, such kids in most of the cases end up using those words again. So instead of instructing them not to use such words, just give them a new appropriate word in a positive way and this solves the problem in 90% of the cases. From the very beginning of our childhood, learning phase depends on one of our hands, which later becomes our dominant hand. Ambidexterity is a condition where some people can write with both hands. This condition is not usually natural, but it is feasible with appropriate training. Neurons in our brains are responsible for the memories that we have. An average human brain could have about 86 billion neurons and in a study it was found that a human brain which had about 100 billion neurons which is way more than in an average case. There is around a thousand trillion junctions called synapse which connects all the neurons to form networks and neural mesh which transmits electrical and chemical signals. These connections are responsible to help ourselves gain consciousness and give us the ability to think and feel about what we experience in our ambience. As our mind is a huge cluster of networks made up of neurons and hence determining the storage capacity of our brain was not an easy task. But scientists have came with a prediction that our brains can store up to 2.5 petabytes of digital data. 1024 gigabyte is 1 terabyte and 1024 terabytes is 1 petabyte. 2.5 petabytes is around recording a TV show for about 200 years non-stop in Full HD. With this you can imagine how amazingly compact and powerful our brain is. 
It can access any of these information directly as we think. When we think, an electrical impulse is produced which links a network of neurons responsible for that specific memory. Also, one of the common questions amongst us is why do we have dreams? When we sleep, whatever activity that we carried out in the day is organized by our subconscious mind. And while the arrangements are going on, our conscious mind receives some electrical impulses. Now it doesn't know what to do with them and it freaks out because these signals doesn't make any sense. It's just the background noise produced by the subconscious mind which is making the memory stronger of the day you lived before going to sleep. And the conscious mind puts all its efforts to make a meaningful image or a hallucination out of that noise, which in most of the cases are completely nonsense. And hence, about more than 95% of the dreams people forget in about 10 minutes after waking up. Just like dreams, many of us have also experienced deja vu. The meaning is complicated to express in words, cause sometimes for a few seconds we feel that the things around us has already happened and we are experiencing the same scenario once again. This phenomenon starts occurring to people from the age of 8 to 9 years old and are commonly experienced by teenagers when the brain is under constant development. It is predicted by the scientists that when a huge number of neurons fire at the same time in sync, a person can experience a deja vu. Now there is no such method which we can use to artificially make the neurons create those impulses in sync. And hence, all the data ever recorded on this phenomenon is most likely to be predicted by the scientists, which may not be 100% accurate. Also, Deja Vu is not the only Vu out there. Have you ever heard of Preske Vu? I'm sure all of us have experienced it for more than once in our life, but we don't remember the scientific name of the phenomenon. A lot of times we have a person's face in our mind, for example an actor, but we just tend to forget that person's name and no matter how hard we try, we just fail to recover it. At some moments, the neurons containing the image of the person is just not able to form a network with the neurons containing the person's name. And we finally give up after some time. If the neurons form the perfect network combination required, then the name suddenly strikes in our mind from nowhere. Such incidents are called Preske Vu. If you liked this presentation, then please subscribe and share this video with your friends, families and colleagues. And as always, thanks for watching.